My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins and grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. Well, Jesus, on this last day before we enter into Holy Week, this privileged time of reliving with you your triumphal entry into Jerusalem, which some of us will celebrate in just a few hours at a vigil mass, and then walking with you through this week in which you end up laying down your life for our salvation to save us from our sins and rising from the dead. Easter's just over a week away. And on the morning of anticipation of entering into this, we read about the aftermath of when you raised Lazarus from the dead. Our reading this morning comes from the Gospel according to St. John, and we hear that many of the Jews who had come with Mary and seen what Jesus had done began to believe in him, but some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. After our Lord raised Lazarus from the dead, many people believed in him. Many that were with Mary, they were there, they were consoling Mary and Martha after the death of their brother Lazarus, and then they saw Lazarus come out from the tomb, and many began to believe in Jesus. But some instead ran to the Pharisees to tell them, to tell on you, Jesus. <laughs> It's something from childhood. I'm going to tell on you. I'm going to make known something you did that's going to get you in trouble. And they want to maybe get you in trouble. And what does that look like? What does it look like when they see someone who's been dead for four days come walking out of his tomb? And they were there with Martha and Mary. And they saw that the grief was real. And this wasn't some kind of a magic trick. And they see the dead man walk out of the tomb and everyone is amazed. And instead of worshiping, instead of believing, as so many in the crowd did, they just went and they told on Jesus to the Pharisees. What, what did that report look like? He, he raised someone from the dead. How, how ridiculous can it be? Then we have to believe in him. At a certain point, we can't make up things that this would be like, again, a magic trick or something like that, or he's claiming authority doesn't have, a dead man just came back to life. And they tell on him. And so the Pharisees gather with the chief priests, and they're wondering what they're going to do. What are we going to do? This man is performing many signs. He's raising people from the dead. He's making the blind see. What are we going to do? And what's their problem? If we leave him alone, all will believe in him, right? Everyone's going to believe. If we leave him alone, everyone's going to believe in him. They're going to see the signs and they're going to believe in him. That sounds pretty good. That sounds like exactly what we want. And the Romans will come and take away both our land and our nation. Uh, there's the problem. That everyone will believe in him and this religious purpose will be fulfilled, but the Romans... Those Romans, the occupying force, they're going to take away our land. They're going to take away our nation because people are believing in Jesus. Now, if Jesus can raise the dead, make the blind see and the deaf hear and cure the lepers, I'm sure he can take care of the Romans. And in fact, in just a number of years and ultimately a few centuries, the Romans are conquered by the gospel and themselves come to believe in you, Jesus. But this mentality is so small-minded. It's just focused on, we don't want the Romans to take us over, or we just want things to be the way they've been, or it's not right for someone to be working miracles. And it's very small-minded. And this small-mindedness 
then expresses itself in the voice of Caiaphas, who was the high priest. We hear that Caiaphas said, You know nothing, nor do you consider that it is better that one man should die instead of the people, so that the whole nation may not perish. That's Caiaphas, the high priest, in this expression of ultimate small-mindedness. It's better for one man to die, who himself has not broken any of the laws that would put a man to death, but it's better for us to kill this one man or to have him killed than for the whole nation to perish. And this type of thinking is in some circles known as utilitarianism, that we're just going to put this person to death. And we may acknowledge that it is an injustice, but it's better for one small injustice rather than for the whole nation to perish. And that is small-minded thinking. Caiaphas may think he's seeing the big picture. This preacher is causing trouble and we need to just protect our nation and our people, but he's not seeing the big picture. He is so tunnel-visioned on their way of doing things. Our response as followers of Jesus, the contrary attitude to this small-mindedness is the virtue of magnanimity. Magnanimity means to have a big soul. It means to see the big picture. It means to be open in a way to God and to our fellow human beings. It means to be open to the different ways that God can work. And that in this magnanimous view where we really live all of the virtues, particularly the virtue of justice, that we would never permit even the smallest injustice to serve our ends. Rather, we see that in living virtue itself, that that is the reward. That we need to, in all things, strive for the good and that God can make all things work for the good. God can bring good out of any situation. And so we can't just cut this little corner or just cheat a little bit because the outcome will be better off. Rather, we have to be heroically faithful, even in the smallest little things. And that's how we live the virtue of magnanimity. And Jesus, that's how we don't fall into this trap as we're preparing to go into Holy Week. We don't want to be in the trap of just small-mindedness of our way of thinking. St. Jose Maria Escriva, in his little book, The Way, writes, the enemy says, will you obey even in this ridiculous little detail? Are you going to obey even in this ridiculous little detail? But with God's grace, we say, I will obey even in this heroic little detail. For followers of Jesus, the little things, the individual people, the ways that we follow God in the smallest little details are matters of being heroic. It's not ridiculous. It's not something that we just write off. Rather, we live our love for you, Jesus, in the smallest little things. And we don't permit any injustice. We don't want to just focus in on my goals and my way of seeing things. Jesus, with you, we want to live this generous magnanimity. And so what are some ways that we can see this heroic generosity? It means that 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 one person, that one person that maybe I don't like too much or who gets on my nerves, well, it's only one person. Jesus, I'm I'm nice to 99% of the people I meet in a day, but that one person, don't you know how frustrating they are? No, exactly that person. That's where the heroism lies. That's where we can really be heroically faithful, or I follow most of the commandments. Again, 99% of the commandments, but this one little, maybe even just a venial sin, but this one little venial sin, this imperfection, this flaw, like Jesus, I, I could be allowed my my one little sin. Like, no, even in heroic faithfulness, as we go into this Holy Week, Jesus, I want to live heroic faithfulness in these little things, every little detail, not just trying to become a collector of good behavior reports, but no, really striving for love. Because love is in living every little detail well. As we go into this Holy Week, we ask our mother, 
in a special way to pray for us. Mary, help us accompany Jesus as we go into this time with big hearts and big souls, doing little things with great love. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations which you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help in putting them into effect. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.